Mm, that's the jam. <laughs> kings and queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am Willie, and I am joined with President Big Brother. How you I'm doing? I'm good. Sir? Good to be back with the fellas. How are you, Willie? How's everybody? Um, I'm a little tired today, but I'm I'm here. Joe, how you doing, brother? Doing good. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and uh, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a mom to be a mom. You could be anything else, grandma, you know, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yes, sir, yes, sir. J dot DMV zone. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Don't you forget it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Maintaining, man. Maintaining. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Yes, happy Mother's Day. Of course, y'all heard us come in with some Tupac, dear mama. It is Mother's Day. Of course, by the time y'all hear this and see this, it'll be Wednesday. But happy Mother's Day from the kings to all of our queens. For sure. For sure. Anybody got any, uh, well... Joe, did you get to do anything special for your mother for Mother's Day? Uh, actually, she was in Hawaii. She just got back. <laughs> My dad took her out to Hawaii. So oh. uh, after the show, I'm going to go down there and I bought her some flowers and card and stuff like that. But yeah. My wife, she's working. So uh, she works Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I took her out on Thursday, took her out for Mother's Day uh, dinner. And then this morning surprise her with some flowers and cards and stuff like that so okay okay big brother what about you was you able to do anything special for your mother thankfully i was you know just letting know know that i appreciate her you know always you know i i, I gift her all the time so you know was able to yeah yeah J dot what about you brother yeah just uh <clears throat> not in the same physical space as her anymore but uh be able to call her and have a good conversation. You know, I think that stuff means more to her than anything these days. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I haven't got to do nothing yet, but I think uh, next weekend we're going to go out and pick out some flowers. She's, she's not a card mom. Don't waste your money on no card. <laughs> Don't get me no flowers. It's going to die. Give me the flowers that I know I can grow. I'm just going to come back every year. So that, that, that's the kind of mom I have. So we're going to do that next weekend, go pick out some flowers for her garden nice. and her, nice. her, um, uh, flower bed. That's all I was trying to say. Her flower bed. So, but yeah, J dot quick question. All right. Right out the gate. Like I'm about uh, to get into trouble, but here we go. <laughs> do you still, you still text? Or call your um, ex-wife and tell her Happy Mother's Day. I do, I do. Okay, okay. Is is that something? Is that something that you just you just feel like you need to do, or is that just something that, based on how society is, is something that you know you have to do? I mean, I you know Mother's Day is 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 for mothers, and um, you know I, I think about the mothers that are important in my life, and we are not together romantically but she's the mother of my child and i said uh you know that ranks her very high you know in the hierarchy of people in my life right now so uh yeah wishing her a happy mother's day just seems like you know the right thing to do it's sincere i hope she has a happy mother's day yeah i appreciate her for what she does for my daughter and uh yeah you know i don't i don't see a reason not to acknowledge her on a day like today still like send the flowers or you think that'd be overboard I, that might be overboard if I have my daughter and, you know, like this year, yeah, I kind of feel bad. I, I didn't plan anything uh, for my daughter and I to do. I could have done something when I had her last week. We could have made a card or bake something. I think what's really messed things up is, is baking things was the the easy go to. You know, I do the whole Chef Elise thing. That was that was what we're going to do. My ex-wife found out recently she doesn't have full. What is it? Similar, similar, whatever the disease is, the gluten thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm have, speaking of. Yeah, she don't have the full blown whatever it is, but she definitely has a gluten intolerance. So now like trying to figure out how to bake for somebody gluten free is a whole different yes. animal. And I haven't even approached uh tackling that. But yeah, I feel kind of bad. I didn't 
I didn't do anything. Like we didn't, you know, my daughter and I didn't go buy anything or anything like that for her this year. So uh, I do feel kind of bad about that. But yeah, flowers and stuff like that, I think step too far. But something, she will get something from me on Mother's Day through my daughter. She know my daughter ain't paid for it. So she know where it came from. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> Joe, what about you? You feel like you you but, you obligated to to buy your wife a Mother's Day gift card and all that stuff? Well, I mean, not obligated, but you know, I think it's the right thing to do for a special day, and uh, you know, having a child, it's not that easy. I would think. I mean, I want to know what it feels like to go through and have a child, right? But uh, you know, it is a special day, so you know, just. Uh, Buying her flowers, letting her, you know, her car or something special or taking her out for, you know, do her nails or something like that. You know, whatever she likes to do uh, to make her feel special on this day. So um, it's not an obligation. It's just uh, it's a nice thing to do, you know, to acknowledge them. But some people make some people feel like it is an obligation. That's why I say obligation. Not Absolutely. saying that you, if that's how you feel. But yeah, yeah, I get you. All right. Well, y'all, y'all ready to go and get into this? Let's do it. Last week was pretty interesting in the hip hop world. <laughs> Did you say the least? This Drake. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, this this past week, the gang done dropped the disc to Rick Ross. <laughs> I haven't I haven't really listened to it, but but uh, Big Brother, what what what's your take on the Kendrick and Drake? beef that happened last week i'm just like can it just stop like haven't we how many more diss tracks are you just going to do like i thought we were all about kumbayas and hip-hop and supporting the culture and i understand i know jj is going to say that's part of the culture you know you come at each other something like that but i'm like can we just stop like i'm just done with it we can't you keep sound- it. like now 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 like- now now you sound like the 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 old uncle at the cookout. <laughs> trying to... <laughs> my whole potato salad. <laughs> my, no, <laughs> no, my thing is that once you find that news stations are covering it, it's time for us to stop because it's just like, all right, it's outside of the culture now. We know hip hop is bigger than just the culture, but I'm just ready for it to stop. Just move on from it. How much more can you say about it? That's where I'm at with it. Like everyone. Say your last piece and move on. Then everyone now you're saying that somebody else dropped a diss track on this one. You know, I think a lot of people might be trying to do it to either pump some more gas into their career or just revitalize interest in their music. But I'm just ready for it to stop. Just just make good music. Okay. Joe, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I agree with Big Brother. It's you know, it's kind of like the, you know, I remember when the Tupac years and Biggie and all that. I mean, those dudes were, I mean, that shit was for real. I mean, people were out there shooting each other and stuff. And, you know, these guys are just talking. And, and you know, one thing that I, uh, one thing about this whole situation is, you know, Drake doesn't even write his own shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, how can you, how can I, even if I was to join a side, how can I join a side of a dude that doesn't write his own shit? I'd rather go with the lyricist, the person that actually, you know, puts time and effort to come up with his own rhymes and his own stuff. You know what I mean? It just sounds more natural and uh, it lets you know, you know, how smart that person is, right? It's like a poet. You know, when the other dude's just paying for people to write his shit, I mean, it means nothing, right? It's basically like you said when it was, what was that that he said? It's like 10 against one or whatever. One of the, one of the, this is 20, 20, 20. against one or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's true. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, and the game, the, you know, the game has been so lost. He's trying to go after everybody, man. So I don't know what the hell's wrong with the game now. He's always got beef with everybody. 50, Dr. Dre, I don't know who else he's got beef with. So I don't know. He's trying to stay relevant, I think. He's a good rapper. Yeah. J-Dot. Man, um, I, 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 I know you done had 30 conversations about this in the last two weeks. Plus some. Um, but no, um, Bless them. <laughs> I I do think this is like this is the culture. Rap is a competitive sport, and I think like I was looking forward to some of this when it was brewing because I thought we would get back to some of that. We're gonna get you know, um, 
know, Kendrick hasn't released a lot of music in the last couple of years. So, you know, just getting new Kendrick songs was something I was looking forward to. If J. Cole was going to be in the mix, um, it's like we are going to get, you know, some some good music, some good bars from some of the, you know, the best lyricists in the game right now. Um, what bothers me about it is that is that that's not what it is. This is not for sport. It's gotten deeply personal. Um, it's, you know, the, the, the stuff that they've said on these records are things you can't come back from. Like, you can't, you can't be cool with somebody after this. You can't question me as a father and talk to my kids and talk to my parents and accuse me of pedophilia. And I mean, mm. it, it's gotten very ugly and very fast. And so if there's anything that, you know, leaves a bitter taste in my mouth or makes me want it to just kind of go away would be that. If it could have just stayed, you know, I'm a better rapper than you. I'm here for that all day. You can do that all day, but that's, that's not what's happening here. Um, which is, you know, it was, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but I think we saw some good things come out of this. We saw J. Cole walk away and we saw, you know, a community of people give him a lot of shit for just walking away and taking a high road on it. And now those same people have to turn back and be like, okay, I understand that. I see exactly why you did what you did. And we 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 saw we saw a man be the bigger man in the most public way you could possibly be. And um, you know, it looks like it's gonna work out for him. So there, there was some good that came out of it. I wish you could have stayed to the bars. But um, you know, these beefs. I mean, Joe, if it wasn't for rap beef, we wouldn't know that Drake don't write his own shit. That came out in a rap beef. <laughs> <laughs> that came hey, out in but, beef with me. That's true. I, I mean, I know, I know it's it's a, it's already been about but do you think drake is the one who fucked it up by getting personal oh man i i, it's I been tried to follow it, 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 it it's been talked about how you know drake is the one who threw the first personal shot and then yeah. kendrick came back and was like look i'm just trying to keep it friendly but if you take it there we can take it there i think drake said in one of his songs like this like uh, the song that, that Kendrick kind of pointed to at the beginning of it, that first person shooter was not the beginning of this beat. Now it's going on for years. And now people, if you're looking at like, there's a lot of stuff on social media. People are going back to like Kendrick's mm. performance in the cypher from yeah. years ago. Yeah. And they pointing out stuff like he was a shot at Drake. He was a shot at Drake. He was a shot at Drake. So it seemed like this has been brewing and going on for a while. Two, two guys with two probably uh distinctly, different perspectives on music and artistry and uh you know it's coming to a head yeah it just it's unfortunate that it's turning into this personal thing and i mean this this is really making rap look like a soap opera like i i planted information for you to get you took the bait like yeah. this is like dude who's doing all of this like just rap that's all we need you to do is just rap stop you know you don't have to have a whole pr campaign or something or put moles in people's camps to try to win a beef just out rap to do it's all you're supposed to do yeah. Yeah, but do you do you think do you think Drake would have could could lyrically go bar to bar with Kendrick? Just uh, we talking think, about just the the straight rap to right, bar for right. bar. There there are two different styles. Joe Joe Button like and this is let's let's make the assumption like that Drake actually writes the stuff, all right? Because if the fact that he doesn't write it kind of like there's a mute point mute point, but let's just say Drake writes the stuff. Joe Button says something. That I thought was pretty uh that made a lot of sense. Um he was saying for this for this battle to really be won like definitively, one of them is gonna have to come into the other one's world and outdo him. So Drake is gonna have to make a more artistic backpacker, you know, uh I don't know, hip hop head record and be super lyrical and beat Drake and to beat Kendrick in that regard if he wants to win this battle outright. And I think Kendrick may have to go and make a commercial hit. He may some of the records that Drake has been putting out have been like songs that in his style of music are going to be hits. Whether you think they were scathing diss tracks, they sound like good Drake records. Like Kendrick may have to go make a commercial record that outdoes Drake to win any if you're going to win any votes in these in their camps. I think where we are right now, if you was a Kendrick fan coming into this, you still a Kendrick fan. You still think Kendrick won. If you was a Drake fan coming in, you a Drake fan. You you think Drake won? Like nobody's crossing lines to to say somebody won or not. So I think one of the two is going to have to go into the other one's world and outdo him to really like definitively say 
I won, but hopefully it's over and we're done with that anyway. Yeah, I, I just, it was crazy. I was, before we started recording, I just came across where it was said that Euphoria was originally 19 minutes long. <laughs> mm. You understand how much you got to hate somebody? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's hate. That's, that's like 19... one of those records from, from the 70s. Remember how your grandparents would have these records and it seemed like that record went on for like 12, 15 minutes? And some of them did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever, you yeah. ever see those reports of like a, a, a serial killer and they be like, he, he stabbed them 132 times. Like, that, how do you stay angry for that long? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like that's 19 passion. minutes. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. But yeah, this, this beef has went back 10 plus years. Yeah, and I, 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 maybe I'm not trying to be too biased, but I feel like if you go back and listen to DNA, I feel like that could have been a slight diss. I'm sure there were but, a lot of, and you know, and oh, Drake yeah. is the king of like sneak dissing people, so I'm sure he's throwing he some is. throwing some shots back that we're gonna go yeah. do the forensics you know, on and on uh, and. We gonna find the whole origin of this thing, but I just wanted yeah. Bard. I'm glad that I'm glad we got some some new music. I heard Drake rapped for the first time in a long time. Like he's been so he's been a reggae Crazy. artist. He's been everything yeah. but a rapper for like the last two years. So yeah. we actually got to hear him rap for a change, like bro. Yeah, am I, am I the, what's up? No, I was about to say, am I the only one who's kind of finding it funny the term sneak dissing? <laughs> Like you just gonna sneak this me like that? Like you just not gonna come out and out and just say it? You just gonna like let it lay there? Yeah, them little them the subliminals, those little <laughs> those double entendres. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Metro Boomin had a nice so uh, they said for the first time ever a, a diss instrumental, and it does go. <laughs> that BBL, that BBL dream. Dream, it, it goes because I be walking around the house to sing and it's like, damn man. It, 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 it's, it's, Hey, I think about this? I think last, last Sunday I was on my way to the store. I think I played it like three times, just the instrumental. I didn't even play like the shit that people was doing because it was already out. I'm just playing the instrumental. BBL Drizzy. Yeah, it goes. It goes. But so yeah, we it say was any, good. So huh? will we say any any of us ever been been sneak dissing each other on, on any of these episodes? No, we, we got time. nine steppers. I, I think I try to be as blatant <laughs> as I possibly can. If I'm gonna diss somebody, you, I want credit for it. Joe, you be yeah. sneak dissing? Not really. Just trying to make <laughs> everybody really. laugh. <laughs> what kind of is that? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I mean, just trying to, mm. trying to, uh, you know, trying to get stuff going, stuff brewing in the show, man. <laughs> hey, 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 don't worry, big brother. I got I got a diss track coming for everybody. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna drop something next week. Let y'all know how I really feel. Hey, but that that's what um girl Rapsley said. She's like, I got a bar for everybody. For anybody yeah. and everybody. Uh, she's like, I, she's like, I already got one loaded up for everybody. That's funny. And, see, and, Willie, and that's the that's the unfortunate thing because I was waiting. I, I blame your camp, Willie. I blame the woke people because I was waiting on somebody woke to post about like what it is they really trying to distract us from with this rap beef. That's what usually happens. When something like this happens, they're like, ah, y'all paying attention to this, but they're really trying to pass this law over here. I think what's happening, Rhapsody has an album dropping it on uh, the 17th. And this is a distraction from the beautiful album we about to get from Rhapsody. We about to get, <laughs> uh, we about to get an album from a female rapper who's going to crush all of the other female rappers in the industry right there. She's going to outdo most mm -hmm. of the males as well, but we may or may not even hear anything about it because we're still talking about BBL Drizzy. It's a distraction. Stay woke, people. Stay woke. Right, yeah, so I, I, I I was there Friday. It was like, the guy was like, my girlfriend thinks that it's a distraction to cover up the whole Diddy thing. I'm like, no. Like that doesn't even like I up that thing. Yeah, I was like, no, like this is I mean, this has been going on for 15 years. I don't know why they would use a 15 year beef, you know, to cover it up. But the interesting thing is the whole universal thing that's going on right now. And with, with Taylor Swift, that that's very interesting. But 
But I'm just, I ain't no know. covering up this bitty thing. If you want to yeah. hear something funny, I was I was doing a show and we was we was going through uh, some old music and we played the Flavor in Your Ear remix. Mm. And for some reason, knowing what I know now, halfway through that track when Diddy uh, started coming on talking about you jingling, baby, I'm wondering one of the, which one of them dudes he was looking at. I'm wondering which one of the dudes he was looking at while he was in the booth talking about your jingle. I just <laughs> everything he says now got to be taken in a different context, and it has made these records hilarious. That whole tell your friends to get with my friends and we can be friends, it reads completely different now, Willie. Completely Arthur, different. Oh, uh, we we was rest we were wrestle for cornflakes. We was like brothers. <laughs> cornflakes ain't that good, dog. Yeah, you nah. think uh you think P. Diddy hung out with uh with R. Kelly, man, mm -hmm. you get, hey, you gonna get us banned? You gonna get us banned, bro? <laughs> Going too far, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure they have worked together. I don't, I don't know outside of that. Uh, but what I was gonna say was that I think was dope was the fact that Kendrick took off his copyrights for the disc records for creators to use them. So then I got to thinking, I was like, man, you know, of course, you know, you got the people who think Drake won, you got the people who think Kendrick won. Then you got, well, this is the culture. Then I'm thinking, like, I feel like he ain't us. Because there was people that was just posting stuff and they was getting big number hits. And some of them was just recycling information that somebody else said and all they did was just talk over it yeah but they was getting big hits big hits i mean you go youtube people was up in you know 84,000 60,000 hits and the same thing on tiktok so i i i feel like the creators really won off this beef man to be to be honest man i mean there's some very creative people out there but if you had like a show on, on YouTube or something like that, and you was, you know, posting like you, like you need to post, you was getting some numbers, man. Yeah. All right. All right well, all hell King, King dot. It, all right. It's, rich, well, it's two rich dudes arguing. Who cares? It is. It is. Uh, but like you said, it was still, it was still good music. I, I wasn't feeling none of the none of the stuff that Drake was dropping, and I liked music when he was singing, but I don't <laughs> the stuff he was dropping. I just I was like, it, it, he was rapping, but it just wasn't enough. You can tell it wasn't enough, and then the fact, what was that? That Friday night when Drake, because Kendrick dropped that morning, then Drake dropped that that night, and then. 55 minutes to drop. I was like, dude, no, we trying to sleep because we, we was all invested. No, I'm not going to say all, but most of us was invested. We was like, dude, this is, this is unprecedented. Our big, brother like was, this. big brother was just hanging out, waiting for LL to say something. He just knew. LL was <laughs> big brother want that on uh, canvas beef to come back. No, nah, no, nah. he got he got a new album about to come out. He just said it on the shop. Yeah, okay, moving on. So, uh, Big Brother, <laughs> <laughs> what you what you got for us today, brother? We not. No. What I got is I'm about to sneak this Willie. All right. <laughs> nah, um, <clears throat> but piggybacking off of one of our last episodes when we were talking about um how responsible. You are with your finances we were talking about credit credit scores and things like that so we want to piggyback off of that and just talk about credit scores and how it affects us how we look at it so with that you know come to find out a lot of people with their credit scores either feel fear because they don't know what it is they don't know how to handle it they don't know how to deal with it they don't know how to get their scores up or they feel shame when they see their scores or what whatever their scores are not really realizing everything that goes into either you either having a bad credit score, fair or good. So just putting it out there to the fellas, when you think about your credit score or when you first thought about your credit score, did you feel fear or shame or anxiety 
when you first started dealing with your credit score? Willie? I was lost. I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And then I was like, so how am I supposed to make this work for me? So I, I just, I wasn't ashamed. I just didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. So once you learned about it, how did you start to educate yourself about your credit score? I mean, I didn't do, a, I didn't do a lot of research other than just try to pay some bills off because they, you know, the credit bureau is like, Hey, this will affect your score. So I was like, well, I guess, I guess that means I got to start paying some, some bills off. You know what I mean? So other mm -hmm. than that, out, outside of that, at that point, that that's all I had did. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize, of course, paying off your bills and everything like that go into it, but also like the length of time of your credit history, you know, new credit, you know, how much you owe also are contributing factors in there. And I don't think a lot of people really realize that. But one thing that I found that really surprised me is the percentage of what the creditors want you to use. You know, they mm. don't want you, they want you to use between 10% and 30% of whatever credit that you have. You know, 10% is the on the low end, but the max is 30% of whatever your line of credit is. Like once you start using over 30% of your credit on like anything, or if you have multiple things of credit, of revolving credit, that's what starts to, you know, affect your credit score. So, but when I, when we said we were going to talk about this, I really wanted to drive home the point of people starting to know their credit score and about credit. But the thing that really blew my mind was when people, when they said a lot of people have fear and shame about their credit score, which makes them not want to be able to deal with it. Or they just say, Hey, you know what? I don't know enough about this. So I'm just, it is what it is. Or some people just shame, like, you know what, I'm too ashamed to get help with this. So that's why I wanted to to bring it in that aspect of, because, you know, we always hear people, oh, this is what you got to do. And this is about credit. This is how you fix your credit. But I think it's about smashing the fear and shame for the people, especially for men, seeing how, you know, with us, it's like, as they said, you know, your credit score is your passport to a lot of things, you know, buying a home, credit cards and things like that. So about tearing down the shame and the fear of that. And for me, I think it's about being able to take a look at your finances, take a look at where you are and not being ashamed of what you don't know and educating yourself with that. So J. Dot, did you ever feel fear, uh, fear of not knowing what your credit was or shame once you figured out what your credit score was? I mean, yeah, I think, you know, my me coming into the idea of credit was, you know, getting denied for something or, or um, you know, and I, I think probably around the, the time I tried to buy my first home, you know, when when you're dealing with that and, you know, people come back to you, right, we need you to get to this credit score. And so you realize, well, my credit score isn't there and this, this is this is considered bad credit and this is what I need to get to to be able to, to make this purchase. And um, see, there was definitely some... You know, you, I felt like I was a successful person in a great position to be able to do something and then realizing this number that I wasn't aware of that was keeping me out of certain places. Um, so that, that definitely, you know, brought some negative, I guess, emotions to the forefront in terms of credit. And, and a lot of times it does, it feels arbitrary. You know, I, I have, you know, which I think a lot of people have these apps and things that are tracking your credit and keeping uh, you know, keeping you aware of changes and, you know, and, and my credit score dropping a point or two or going up, you know, a point or two seems to happen, you know, randomly almost, it seems to me like I didn't do anything different. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, either I gained some points or I lost some points, you know, out of nowhere, the whole idea of like, like you said, them wanting your credit usage at a certain place. So, you know, is counterintuitive. You may think paying something off or, or getting the credit card down to zero is the right thing to do, but that I actually end up lowering your credit score and it will raising your credit score. And uh, I think, you know, credit gets mentioned nowadays when women talk about dating, they want to know what your credit score is and what, you know, what you're capable of doing. Uh, it's just so much tied to it socially and, and, and personally, uh, you know, these days I just, 
I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to be a good person. I don't like to owe you. So if I owe you, I want to pay you. And uh, whatever that does for that that weird number that changes depending on what bureau I'm looking at, uh, then so be it. But I just don't like to be in debt. So that's, that's all we're going to do for now. How many bureaus is it? It's three, right? Three major three. ones. Three major ones? Yeah. What are they? And your score can be different at each one of them. Yeah, they can have different information on each. You try to you go to get something removed, you got to get it removed from all three. You know, you only get it removed over here; it's still sitting over there, and now your score is different in two different places. I don't know who's looking at what. You know, you go to get a car. You know, who did they reach out to to get your credit from? Like it's it's a it's a weird, and it can become just overwhelming to the point where you're like, you know, forget it. Like I'll just whatever. I either pay everything in cash or uh, just stop caring. What, and that's uh, just, but, and, well, and that's, what I'm asking is what what is the three bureaus? We got TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, Equifax and, and Joe. What's the third one? Like Exper Experian or Experian or something, yep. like that, something like that. Yeah, Exper Experian. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and that and just what J Dot said, where it's like people, you know, between the three, I'm high on this one and this this one, and then some people just throw their hands up, like it just is what it is. I'll just pay cash. And what people don't realize is. If you don't have long-term credit history, that also can keep you in a low credit score number, which also feeds into the fact the the way we're coming at this is, you know, breaking the fear and the shame, the fear of not knowing your your credit score or the fear of not knowing how to deal with your credit score or the shame of whatever your credit score is, just getting getting away from, you know, those things to help you look at it. And start to work on it. So, Joe, same question to you. Did was there ever a time that you felt, you know, anxiety, shame, fear, you know, when dealing or when you found out or when you had to first deal with your credit score? Yeah, when I when I couldn't, well, when I was trying to buy my house uh, the first time, uh, I didn't know what the hell any of this stuff was like eight years ago. You know, what I mean, I just I just wrote it. When I got credit cards, used them, bought a bunch of shit. You know speakers and car stereos and you know i just like uh you I just had, had a yeah. good time yeah i was just freaking buying everything when best buy man and i had no idea that there was a such a thing as a credit score so you know when it came down to getting something later on you know they're like oh your credit's bad i was like what what is that you know and so i was just basically just riding along man without knowing anything about credit and uh then I kind of figured out, okay, this is what it what it is, and I tried to get my house, and yeah, it was it was shameful, you know, when like my credit, you you talk to people, and you're like, oh yeah, my credit's seven fifty, and I'm like, what what is that? And you know, my credit was like five, and I was like, damn, you know, that's that's pretty bad. So, you know, I had to like pay stuff off, and you know, things like that, and you know, got my credit up to where uh, I could I could buy a house, but it took you know it took me about four years. You know what I mean? And yeah, so I can buy my first house, which is, was three years ago. So it took me four years just to try to try to get there to a level to where I could actually buy my house. So it, it kind of sucked. So I wish I would have, I wish it would have taught me that shit in high school instead of some other bullshit. And they should have taught exactly. me shit about life. You know what I mean? Like, this is what you need credit score. This is what you need for this. You know, this is how you save your money. Instead, we were watching sex video, sex education, and some other weird shit that we were watching in those schools I was at. And I was like, teach me how to, you know, how to live my life after I move out of my parents' house. You know what I mean? And uh, kind of like life learning, life lessons. Yeah, life but, classes. Yeah, I yeah, think that, you know. I get, But my thing is, is this is just like another entrapment. This is just another program to keep the man down it's a trap. The credit but, score is a it, it's a trap. But you're right, Willie, because credit scores didn't start being really used until 1989. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you figure this, the credit score is still basically kind of young ish, where when it affects black and brown communities, because because of credit scores, whether you have a low credit score, because, you know, most black people from and black and brown people pay stuff in cash. 
because they don't want to owe nobody. So that can also lead to you having a low credit score. So then you are subject to predatory loans and high interest rates and things like that. So once you start to build your credit, now you got all these high interests from everything else, which can also help you stay stagnant either and just a fair or good and not be able to get up to the high numbers, you know, because you know, a good number is the perfect number is 850. And then they, I think they said it's like 1.7% of Americans only have an 850 credit score. And that's the highest you can go. Like you can no longer, they no longer use 900 as the, the best point anymore. But you're right. Black and brown yeah. communities are stuck in the middle. Uh, there's a predatory lending high interest rates or things like that that kind of keep you right there. And then by the fear and the shame, which, you know, which we're trying to smash right now, a lot of people don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I was just reading, uh, according to Experian, the average credit score for young adults ages 18 between 25 is 679. Yeah, and then, you know, with that, when and just from the age that you did, when they got all these credit cards going on to college campuses, giving these to, to kids who probably mm -hmm. just hungry and trying to get by and buy these books. Now they got them trapped up into, you know, debt and credit and things like that. Yeah, the credit score, the interest rates, it's it's a it's a big trap, man. And then it's yeah. like you 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 mute it, uh Jay. But it's a it's a big trap because they they make you go that route because that that's basically the currency right now. The yeah, dollar bill yeah. the, the the dollar bill is not a currency anymore. It's all about credit. And that's that's exactly how it happened to me, big brother. I got my first credit card on, on a college card. I got there and got my welcome freshman packet, and they had credit card applications in it. And they probably gave you like $5,000, didn't they? And they, they gave me a credit card. Knowing I'm a student on a campus, I don't have a job. Like, how are you expecting me to pay this back? And like you said, I was using it to buy pizza and, you know, eat and, and survive. But what does it say about, like, our capitalistic society as a whole that in order to live, you have to borrow money? Like, you can't you can't survive on the money that you make in order to have a home, to have a car, things that are almost necessities to participate in this world. Like you have to borrow money. And yeah. they, 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 they set you up to be in this position. And then, you know, like you said, take well, advantage of you from there. Well, your, your, your job and that paycheck, that's just you existing. You borrow money. <laughs> now you live it. <laughs> now you live it. Now, you, now you, can, you want to get now, that job, you're gonna have to buy you might have to buy yourself a car, and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a and, world of grief. You're trying to buy a car without taking out a loan. And and that's the other point that, you know, before we wrap this segment up, just want to bring it home where people really shouldn't be ashamed of their credit score because there are companies with bad credit scores that they still allow to do business. So when I found out how some some companies have bad credit scores and things like that, you know, it, I believe the percentage was like 56 percent of Americans, you know, just have fair or poor credit scores. Okay. So is so no one should ever just feel like, shoot, this is just me. I you know the point the point to bring home is just that. It's time that once you learn about it, start educating your family and your household about credit scores, how to maintain it, keep it, build it, and just really work your, your credit score. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, what's the United States credit score? Because we owe everybody. Exactly. Like, who are you motherfuckers to tell me I can't buy a house? <laughs> yeah. You owe every motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, trillions of dollars. Trillions. The trillions. Trillion. Yeah, and, and that's the point that we get to. How how and you know, nowadays some jobs, depending on what your credit score is, you can't even apply for it or get that job. Which okay. is crazy. And you know, me, just a side note, I believe there's some positions in government you shouldn't be able to run for if you have a bad credit score. Mm. I mean, I can tell you, as a person who's held a couple of security clearances, your credit score absolutely plays into that they look at that as a pattern of irresponsibility 
if you can't be trusted with, you know, to pay back your bills and pay your bills on time or pay back money you owe, you can't get security clearances to work some of these places. So like you said, Big Brother, yeah, absolutely. They should be checking credit scores on senators and presidents and all that other stuff because exactly. yeah, I, can, I can't even work in that office if I'm not trustworthy enough with the way I handle my money. Yeah, well, shit. If you if you don't got the money to pay it, then how you how you supposed to pay it? Because the cost of living the, the the cost of living keeps going up. Hey, you and got I, you got blood in your veins, right, Willie? You got some blood plasma. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's, that's only that's only two dollars hey, a pop. You still old. You still young enough. You said you're age. Still, you're still young enough to hit that sperm bank, Willie. You still young enough to drop off donations. That's true. That's true. That's true. But, but that's shit. what they don't that's what they don't understand. A lot of Americans are still, you know, a lot of people lived off credit cards during that pandemic. Yeah. And you know, you're you know, and they're trying to pay it off. That's 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 tough, dude. That's tough. You're trying to pay shit off and you still trying to live. Yeah. I mean, exactly. yeah, I mean, yeah, you made a choice to to make that purchase, but that's probably a purchase that you need to do. Everybody don't have Thirty five hundred dollars to get their car fixed, but I need my car so I can go to work so I can pay my mortgage. <laughs> or you have seniors who are buying their medicine with their credit card. Yeah. Like I think I think everyone has bought a a necessity of life on a credit card because you just did not have the cash flow at the moment. If mm -hmm. you if you look at the numbers for what it say what they say it costs to to live comfortably in most states. And then you look at the average income in those states, they don't match up. Yeah. They're in a situation where you, you, you're not going to get paid enough to live comfortably, you know, in, in the world as it is. So they're setting you up to always have to owe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, that that's what bank that's how banks keep their, you know, their um their stocks up, you know. Constantly that just that revolving credit, that revolving credit, that revolving credit. How many times have you just been flowing? Your credit cards are good. And then they're like, oh, yo, we, we, we're we going to give you five more thousand dollars mm -hmm. in, in a line of credit. Yeah, they it, it, it's happened to me. Like I, I didn't use my credit card for like like four years. And then like er, like every other year, they would increase it. You've been approved for this. You've been approved for that. But let me miss like two payments. Your 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 credit has has been decreased. For real? For thirty dollars? <laughs> For a thirty dollar payment? You gonna decrease it? <laughs> For real? Yeah, and that's what to me. That's what I'm saying. You know, credit cards are like invisible money. Like, oh, I ain't got to think about paying it right now. Like, how many how many on here have just went to the grocery store? Like, oh, I'm not. I'm just gonna use my cash. I'm just gonna put it all in the credit card. Joe, you ever did that? Yeah, yeah, I put in the card and then pay back later because usually because I was short on money or something like that. But I have a there's a coworker of mine that he pays everything with the card and then pays it off when he gets paid. That's I don't know. That's his that's his thing. Everything that he uses, he never uses any cash or anything. Just uses everything as a credit card and just keeps his money accounted for. And then he just pays it off as soon as he gets paid. He just pays every card off whatever he uses. That's, I don't know why he's doing that. Maybe to boost up his credit. I don't know, but that's, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think I think we've all done that. Then the extra trick is, you know, you get a percentage back or you get miles and things like that. So that's more enticing for you to, for you to use your card. But, you know, credit cards, lines of payment, personal loans, these all factor into your, your credit score and how you use them, how you pay them back. And so, yeah, well, Thank you, big brother. Appreciate you. No, I appreciate you fellas. Let's talk about it. I'm sure someone listening to it will be helped. Like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this fear and shame. And let me just look at this, this credit score. Next episode, we're going to talk about how broke we are. Uh, <laughs> long episode. Long episode. Long episode. Yeah. Oh, got no keys. All right, Joe, what you got for us, brother? All right, guys. So I decided to switch it up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to steal something from Big Brother. And uh, this segment's what I call Knowing Your Kings. So I'm going to throw a curveball at you all. Uh oh. I just want you to share a travel story, something that you, a place that you've gone, either good or bad experience, or something that you 
you you saw that was that was amazing you know any anything like that you know and uh let's start out with big brother i'm cracking my back i'm like oh he's gonna throw it over to willie <laughs> um some place that i saw that was amazing one of the most recent places that i traveled to was um toronto and I had always wanted to go and everything like that. So I went to Toronto and I'm typically like an island person. So, you know, I like those type of vacations and everything like that. But I went to Toronto and I went not as a tourist. I just mixed in with, you know, everyday life and just did everything, everyday things. But what I found that was terrific about it. Have any of y'all been to Toronto? Yeah. I've been. Yeah. So one thing I found terrific about Toronto was it was one of the most diverse cities I've ever been in. Like literally when soon as you step off the plane, every culture just moving, living through the city. And it almost felt like this is what life would look like if everybody just got along. When I say every culture from black and brown to Asian to, you know, indigenous, everything. So I would say the most amazing thing I saw was just the community of diversity throughout that city. And yeah, just, I just really enjoyed it. So that would be for me. That's pretty cool, man. You weren't out there visiting Drake, were you? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you doing, big brother? On no. The sixth guy? No, no. And plus the, the exchange rate was amazing. The food was so good. You know, it yeah, I just had a I had a great time. Everybody beautiful I hear people. that from it, it they go to Toronto. I hear that it's, it's oh beautiful people. Oh. Beautiful people. That's pretty cool. All right, Will. Any place, travel story, anywhere you've gone that's you've been amazed by or something that you looked at that was really cool or an experience or a bad experience. It doesn't matter where you went, different state, country, whatever. Um, we went to, when we went to Jamaica, that was, that was nice. Uh, the actual resort, which is, it's crazy. It's crazy how you have to go through literally the ghetto to get to the resorts which is, I, is I, it's crazy. They had like the biggest KFC I had ever seen in my life. It looked, <laughs> it, it looked how, like, how a, did you it find looked, it? Because you had to go through the city. It was oh, just, okay. I mean, we weren't looking for it, but um, it looked like a warehouse. What? It was, it was like, it was like, it's, it's like a two story building. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was every bit over 2000 square feet. Oh, no, I'm taking it back. Over, it was up. It was over a hundred thousand square foot. It was huge. Holy shit! Never seen a KFC this huge before, and I was like, and, "But where it's at? It's like in the middle of like, uh, I I can't remember what city we was in, but it's kind of like like sits like right in the middle, and it was just it was it was yeah." Out of everything, that was the one thing that stuck out. It's like a KFC. It, it was like in the middle of nowhere. That's what it felt like. It was like a KFC. Like, really? But uh, that place was wild, man. And they don't have speed limits over there. <laughs> For real? <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, was, I was sitting like kind of like behind, like adjacent of the driver of our um the driver that was taking us from the airport to the resort. And we're like doing this thing, kind of like swerving back and forth and, you know, breaking. And I was like, hey, man. I said, my man. I said, y'all got you got car insurance over here? He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, why you ask? I was like, I just want to know how much my, my life is worth. I said, because y'all not slowing down for shit. They hitting corners. <laughs> a 45 degree corner going 50 miles per hour and like the lanes the lanes are so close to each other you can literally stick your hand out the window and touch somebody in the next car that's how close and they driving like this the only time they slowing down is like when pedestrians are like walking in the street like with you know with their animals and stuff like that but like i said like in order for us to get to our resort we had to go 
through the ghetto. Like these people are living in tents and have like, they have like a tent and have like a metal awning on top of their tent. And mm-hmm. then they got like mm-hmm. buckets to collect water. And I was like, dude, I'm like, I felt, I felt bad. I was like, here I am going to this place and they live literally living in the sticks, like in the trees and shit. But at the same time, you will see like these million dollar homes that would be like 200 yards away. It was just, it, it was just, it, it was very intriguing. Uh, I remember uh, like the, we stayed in a resort, so it was like all exclusive. So you can just drink, eat. It was, it was gluttony, whatever you want to, you know, 24 seven. And I remember a couple of times I'll be on the beach, just kind of, you no know, check it, you no, know, listen to the water, drinking me a pina colada. And then a random staff would just walk up and be like, Hey man, you want to, you smoke? I'm like, yeah, I'm smoking right now. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, do you smoke? And I'm like, nah, man, I'm good. Cause this, this feels like some type of entrapment. I'm in a, I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> if I get locked up, I'm not coming back. You know what I'm saying? And, <gasps> and then they would tell you like, you know, they got signs on the, on the beach. Like you can only go so far on the beach. Like when you're walking on, mm. on both sides <laughs> and the signs, they have bar war on each side with signs says, do not, do not cross your, your safety is no longer like, basically they're not responsible for you. Once you leave the, leave the beach. Mm-hmm. If, if you're not with them, like in like a tour bus or something. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. It was, it was, it was dope, but the beach was definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Especially like the, the, um, the sun rises and the um when the moon comes up because you can see the see them both reflecting off the the water in the ocean and stuff but it it was beautiful man but just the fact that we had to go through all that it was just like dude i feel bad like i literally felt bad you know but but yeah that's that's my story that's pretty cool man i like your story i ate um one of my buddies was telling me that he went to Jamaica once and there he had like, there was all kinds of Rolex that were selling and watches everywhere. These dudes had them like all over the place. And I was like, yeah, they were obviously fake. I don't know if they were fake or not, but he's like, man, they're, they look legit. And they look like the real thing. I was like, what? i tell you what, like, cause we had to go to, we had to go to Newark to catch the, uh, what do they call it? When you got to catch two more than one plane. Yeah. Layover. Yeah. 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 We had to, we had to go to Newark for our layover. And that was my first time going to Newark. And their security guards is walking around with MP3s and shotguns around the uh, airport. And I was like, whoa. You know, we get to Jamaica. <clears throat> These motherfuckers ain't even set up. We had to wait. We had to wait on the plane 45 minutes for them to get everything set up. They, they weren't prepared <laughs> when we landed. And I was like, I'm going to just say it. I was like, no, nah, I was like, man, this is some nigga shit right here. Like, <laughs> this, like they really on CPT time, like for real. Like they was like, no, nah, we just wait till they get here. They didn't have the, they didn't have like the little um, tour guide thing set up or nothing. Like we was just standing there. And then all of a sudden it was like, you go there, you go there. It was like, what? But. Coming in, I was able to bring like uh, you know, they got the travel as uh lotion and stuff. You no, know, the 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 what's the FAA approved? Is that what it mm-hmm. is? Yeah. So I was able to bring it in, but when I left, we had to throw it away. They wouldn't let us take it. But what? like they like their airport is literally set up as a mall, as a tourist mall. So you can buy back, you can buy like cases of liquor. Cases of cigarettes, all this for dirt cheap. Oh, yeah, the duty free shop is the best thing in the yeah. world. But the thing is, what they don't tell you, like this one, this one guy, he bought like I think he bought like eight <laughs> cases of bourbon, now, right? Because like the like the fifths over there was only like fifteen dollars a bottle. This was back in like two thousand sixteen, seventeen. So that was like cheap. He gets to the airport. They was like, nah, you can only bring like three cases. You can't take all these. 
And he's like, yeah. So he had to like, I think he, I think he had to get, get like somebody else in the family to, to claim the other, the other cases. Yeah. Yeah. And I had like, I think I had, I think I had like a, a, like a miniature Pepsi or something. I couldn't take it on the plane. Yeah, it was weird. Like coming in, you can bring all you want. They they didn't search us. They, they, I mean, they, they it was it was, you. it was it was it was late, very laid back. <laughs> it was very they, they they don't have TSA in Jamaica. <laughs> they got their own brand. <laughs> Wait, it was wait, Joe, Joe, that's what I got from the story. They didn't search you. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Co- compared to what we went through through TSA, it was very lax. But leaving, yeah, you, you, you not, you not leaving with everything you came with. Huh. Interesting. Crazy. Yeah, that's a pretty cool story, Will. I like yes, it. Sir. I like it. Thank you, J Dot. Yes, Story, uh, good or bad experience, funny situation, amazing yeah. place you've been in, you 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 checked out. Well, since, you since everybody else is telling these beautifully uh, oh, glowing <laughs> stories about great places they've been, I, I figure I'll, I'll switch it up. Um, if you know me personally, you know that recently I have discovered that I uh, I hate Cleveland. I hate Cleveland. I'll be out <laughs> I, I can't stand that place. I thought it Baltimore and uh and like New York were very high on my list as, as places that I really didn't like. But Cleveland is just taking over. From the from the moment I got off the plane, the airport just you ever you ever been in an airport, like arrived at the airport and things are so janky in the airport, you automatically know, okay, I'm in the worst place yeah. possible. Like nothing else good. This city has got to be trash if this is I'm what in they danger. Need to see. In I'm the air, yeah, yeah, I'm literally in danger. I don't even know it. Yeah, I don't even know. Like it, it, it was horrible for them. My flight over there was bad. The, the person I got to sit next to was bad. Getting off the plane was bad. Getting to the hotel was bad. I ended up staying in a hotel that was housing some people that were doing like a dog show. So it was nothing but like super brolic pit bulls shitting everywhere. Like it, it the whole experience of Cleveland was bad the whole place just looked rusty it looked like everything just looked like it was in need of repair in some sort of way like nobody people stopped caring about it a long time ago i i never wanted to leave a place or was so ready to get back on a plane and go back home in my life i didn't sleep the last night like i just stayed up and watched south park until it was time to get in the shuttle so i could get back to the airport and get back to civilization it felt like i had left like you talking about Jamaica and like you had to go through the hood. That's how it felt like I went to a third world country inside of America. And like, this is not how people are supposed to live. People shouldn't be treated this way. This is inhumane. I want to get back to civilization and creature comforts and just normalcy. I, I hate Cleveland. I haven't experienced much more of Ohio to say anything bad about Ohio, but Cleveland, yeah, y'all, y'all need to do something. Y'all, y'all got work to do. But to, to, to tell one story about my my experience with customs, uh, Willie, I took a cruise uh, a couple of years ago and did like seven islands in seven days. And one of those, I don't, I don't suggest that either. That's the dumbest thing you could ever do. Just go someplace and see that place for seven days. Don't try to see seven places in seven days. It's just dumb. But uh, I went, well, I think it was, I got off the boat on, in, in Antigua and, uh, went to it. I was a cigar smoker back then. I went to a cigar shop and the guy was, he sold me some Cubans and he was like, man, don't even worry about it. All you got to do is take the little ring off of it and they won't know what it is. They can't, they can't find you for bringing them back into the States. I was like, bet that sounds like a plan. That makes sense to me. Sounded legit. I bought a shitload of Cubans. Like I'm about to just, I'm, I'm showing off to everybody. As soon as I get home, you know, all these Cuban cigars I got. So the day before we come back to port in like Puerto Rico, they have a little meeting on the boat and they're telling you to get prepared for customs. And they're like, oh, yeah. And by the way, if you have any Cuban cigars and they told you just to take the ring off of it and they won't know what it is, that's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit. <laughs> and the fine is like $500 per cigar. So I'm no. looking at all the cigars I got. And so Damn. they had a party on the boat. They called it Suck Until You Chuck. Pause. But uh, 
basically on one of the smokestacks, they had a party. You go up there and you just try to smoke as many of the cigars that you have until you can't do it. If you smoke cigars, if you inhale too much of that stuff, you're going to get sick. You might throw up whatever it is. Yeah. So it was the suck, suck until you chuck. People trying to get rid of all these these this contraband that we had purchased, you know, because somebody sold us a drink. So that's, I don't have any good travel stories, Joe. I'm sorry. That's all I got. <laughs> that's a good uh, tell you what. I wait, I, I literally had to turn my mic off because I was laughing so much during the story. <laughs> I did find a um it was a Woodford cigar, and that was nice. That was nice. It was a Woodford. Uh, it was dipped, yeah, uh, soaked in wood in, in Woodford. Oh man, I think I bought, I bought like three of them. I brought two of them home. They didn't take them, but okay. those those was good. That was nice. I'm mad that I can't find those here. Hmm. I wonder. I heard that five hundred dollar per cigar. I was like, yeah, I can't can't risk it. Can't risk <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one, man. I didn't throw up though. I didn't throw up. I, didn't I, throw up? About, I threw a lot of cigars away, Joe. I just tell you that. Damn. Ah, oh, that's funny. But you think but you know the thing is, if like let's say like you just like, I'm gonna just leave this here. You know the crew's gonna take the shit though. You know they're gonna yeah. find some way to smuggle it off the fucking ship in their luggage. So that, and that's probably that's probably part of the game. Maybe the shop owner told me the truth. <laughs> And then I was yeah. going to get away with it, but they was like, nah, let's convince all these people to leave these cigars in their rooms and then we'll come pick them up later. So we'll tell them mm-hmm. you're going to get fine. Yeah. Damn. Scare tactics, man. Scare tactics. Damn. Mm-hmm. Sh- what you, what sh- you got, Joe? Uh, I don't know. I got a, I'll make it a quick one. Uh, if you ever, a place that I visited uh, with my family, my wife and uh, kids is uh, the Grand Canyon, man. If you ever have an opportunity to come over to Arizona and you don't want to do anything else, uh, I suggest that you go to the Grand Canyon. Don't do it like in the summer, summer, because it's hot as hell. But, you know, if you want to see a place like that, when you get there, uh, it looks fake. Like I've lived here in this state for, I don't know, uh, many years now, and I've never been to the Grand Canyon. So, we're like, hey, let's take a trip to the gang to the Grand Canyon and let's rent a cabin up there and all kinds of stuff. So <clears throat> we show up to the national park, right? And uh, I'm looking around and it looks like a picture. It looks like Bob Ross was out there painting the fucking ceiling, like the like the Ooh. sky and stuff. I mean, it looks fake. You look, you look out and you're like, this is not, is this real? Like it and it's huge. Just a big old canyon with a lot of history. It's huge. It takes you lots of hours to go to different places there. Uh, there's also a place where you can do like a skywalk where the floor is is uh, transparent, right? It's like glass and you can see down into the canyon and you're like just walking around. You have to use like booties. You can't use your can't use your regular shoes on there. Uh, so, yeah, it's I found it to be beautiful, especially at different times of day when the sun's dropping and all kinds of stuff. And it has a lot of history, a lot of Native American history in there and a lot of other, you know, weird stuff like the. Uh, probably will you probably know this stuff, but the giants, you know, the giants that roam the earth, uh, stuff like that, <laughs> you know, all, all in the Grand Canyon. So, yeah, so that's yeah, there, there, yeah. there's supposedly a a um big library there too, with a lot of important history, um, documents. I, I heard it's true. There's a place where I wanted to take my wife on a, like our anniversary, and you actually eat and stay inside the canyon. There's yeah. like a restaurant inside there, but it's for you to get there. You have to, it's like a wait time is crazy. So we're like, we ain't doing this shit, but yeah, I mean, that's a good what one. They, one good experience. What do they I, serve? Uh, I don't know. I didn't even look at the menu. When I saw the schedule, I was like, ah, oh, shit, we're not, we're not going to be able to make it in here. And uh, it's expensive too. So I was like, nah, we're good. But that's for another I day. You I just thought of this one. Have I ever told you guys my New Orleans story? Hmm. No, I feel like I've heard it, but please say it. Tell it. it. Don't don't spoil it for anybody else. Really. So, <laughs> so I went I went to New Orleans with my ex wife before we were married. We went down there for a concert, best concert I ever been to. It was a great trip. But on the trip, we get up one morning and uh, we're staying right on the French Quarter. So we decide, and we went like in the middle of 
like June. So it's it's really hot. But we get up one morning, we decide we're gonna take a horse carriage tour of the French Quarter. So we get on this tour, <laughs> we're going through it. We out in the open, it is hot, can't take it no more. So as soon as the tour is over, we find the first little dude on the side of the road selling waters and stuff, and we stop to get something. So he got a he got a uh, a cooler. He opens the cooler. He lifts up some dry ice, and it's like popsicles and stuff. I get a water. My uh, my ex wife, my girlfriend at the time, she gets a a, a strawberry popsicle. And so I, I turn around to pay the man. In the time I turned around to pay the man, she's ripped the wrapper off the popsicle, and she's jammed it in her mouth. Now it was directly under the dry ice. So when I turn back around, her lips had frozen around the popsicle. And now she can't get the popsicle out of her mouth. So she just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's going, mm -hmm. I got to use the water. The guy that sold it to us is laughing his ass off. I'm, I'm trying to use the water I just bought to pry her lips off the thing. I was reaching for my camera, but she gave me the, the look. I figured this is $10,000, America's Funniest Home Video is guaranteed winner. But she didn't seem to agree with that sentiment. So she gave me the look like if you pull that camera out, you know, you know what's about to happen. But eventually got her lips off the popsicle. She still ate it. But uh, the next day we flew out and I guess that's that's a burn. So by that by that morning, like her lips had swollen up. She could barely talk. Uh, and I just and this is probably one of the reasons why. She's my ex-wife now, but the whole trip home where she's like trying to, mm, 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 she's trying to tell me stuff. And I'm just like, what is it, girl? What's Timmy's in the well? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But that's one of them. That's, that's my new one. That's another travel story for you, Joe. That's good, man. Thank you. So that's, you know, I, I think it was important to have, I want to change it up a little bit. I like when I have my, uh, when I get my segments in uh, to try to, get the listeners to know the other side of, of the Kings. Right. And yeah, uh, one, that was one tip of advice before I end it here, give it to Willie, give it back to Willie is make sure that whenever you're going to travel somewhere else, you check the travel advisory online because we were going to uh, schedule a trip to the Bahamas one day. And uh, I just decided to look at the advisory and it, on there, it said red, right. And on the bottom, it says, do not travel here because you will get raped. You will get mugged. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I was like, so I, was like, I told my wife, I was like, "Hey, uh, this is she looked at me. She's like, stop. I know you don't want to go there. And I'm like, no, this is on the website of the United States. <laughs> it's so, like, babe, I, I know I don't want to go, but I'm really, I really don't want to get raped. That's really the thing. That's really what it's about. Mm. I was like, holy shit, I'm not going there. So instead we went on a cruise to like, Long Beach from Long Beach to Catalina Islands, or which was nice in Mexico. And oh, stuff. that's horrible! But yeah, I was like, hell no, I'm going to the Bahamas, man. That's great. And it was cheap too, man. I was. They like, should put that sign outside of prisons. You will get raped. <laughs> you will get robbed. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you will get. Raped. I'm just saying, it was a great deterrent for Joe. Maybe it'll help out the crime problem. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going there. Get raped for free? Shit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you gotta say you gotta say no diddy after that. No no. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good one, Joe. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Well. Appreciate you. Uh we got any closing remarks where we wrap up this episode, fellas. All right. Hope all the mothers had a great day. I know it's late, but yeah. You are appreciated. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Well, let's go and wrap it up. Big Brother, tell the people where they can find you. I'm the Resident Big Brother, host of Big Brother Advice podcast, available on all streaming platforms. New episodes premiere on Thursday. J Dot. Uh, yeah, I am the host of the What Is TWS podcast. Episodes drop on Mondays on all your streaming platforms. Also, have a radio show on Opulence Radio called The Kiss the Sky Experience. Uh, this next week, I'm doing a four-part series with some of my other uh, radio hosts. We're going through all the four regions of the the, the U.S. We're calling it the Four Coasts, and uh, we're going to play music from all of the Four Coasts from four different perspectives, you know, what people like. We're going to see what we like, what we agree with, what we don't agree with. Uh, it was interesting, you know, putting it together, so I think people enjoy uh, the musical choices. And then, uh, yeah, my new podcast, One Man and One Woman, the podcast with Opinionated Sense, Tara Michelle, 
that drops every Friday on all your streaming platforms. Um, I think they're dope conversations necessary for the, the times right now when there seems to be so much, you know, men versus women kind of thing. Um, I think these conversations everybody could benefit from from listening to. They're good conversation starters. Hopefully, you know, you leave the show and want to have conversations uh, in your personal life uh, about these topics. But yeah, it's one man, woman, the podcast every Friday, all streaming platforms. You want to know what's interesting about that show is I actually agree with 90% of the stuff that you say, Jay. <laughs> That's right, Willie. Here we go. Solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> Joe. Yeah, I'm Joe, the host of uh, Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Uh, you can catch me on Spotify, Apple Music, Good Pods, and YouTube. Also, please uh, follow us on YouTube at the League of Kings podcast, and uh, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And I am really half of the Thing About Us podcast that I host with my wife, Fiona, where we talk about all relationship stuff. Um, we're all streaming on all platforms currently the queen is dropping a teacher's lounge episode so that would be out this week so this that'll be the first of hers this um season but yeah happy mother's day and uh have a good one y'all